What's up guys, Ghost here, and today I wanted to talk about how to get a bit of frame rate out of your battlefield for experience. Now I'm sure that all of you guys have been busy tinkering around with your video settings just as I have, trying to optimize your frame rate so you stay above that all important 60 FPS mark, but at the same time you want to get the most beautiful experience, shall we say, from the game itself, because let's face it, it is a really good looking game. And I figured since I've been going to uh, a lot of lengths to sort of figure out which video settings are frame rate intensive, which give me more frames, which give me less, etc. And a few little other tips and tricks that I've used to increase my FPS, I figured I would share those tips and tricks with you guys as well. So here in the background you guys can see I'm flying around Parasol Storm and up in the top right of the screen is my frame rate counter. So before we get into the video settings, a couple of things to bear in mind. First of all, I am recording this footage that you see now with DX Tori, and that does knock around 20 to 30 frames off. So if you don't plan on recording your footage, you can really add 20 to 30 frames to what you're seeing on the screen at the moment. Another thing to bear in mind is that this is in fact an empty server. The reason that I'm doing that is that I just don't really want to annoy all the people in the server by flying the helicopter around like an idiot and not actually killing anybody. So yeah, just bear that in mind that if you are actually in a full server with 64 players and um, they're all creating explosions and there's effects going off everywhere, that is going to make your frame rate somewhat lower. Alright guys, so before I show you my settings, first of all you're going to want to display your own frame rate and if you don't know how to do that, you hit the tilde key which will display your command console. If you don't know which key that is, it's the one right next to number one above the tab key. And uh, Once you're in there, you type perf overlay dot draw fps space one and hit enter and then your frame rate should be displayed in the top right of the screen. And if you want to take it away again, you enter that exact same sentence but instead of putting in one, you put in zero. All right, so if we look at my settings here, and uh, just to give you an idea of what kind of a rig I'm running on, it's an i7-3770K overclocked to 4.5 gigs, a single GTX 780, which is also overclocked, and then eight gigs of RAM running at 1866 megahertz. So I can't tell you exactly the frame rates you're gonna get because obviously, everybody's system is different but i can tell you which graphical settings have made the biggest differences for me in terms of frame rate so if we start over at the left here as you can see i'm just on a regular 1920 by 1080 which i think is the sort of display that most people are running on vsync off as always field of view i keep at 90 you can point this up much higher but you kind of get this fisheye effect i feel if i go above 90 and bigger field of view above 90 doesn't always equal better motion blur amount you want to have that completely off in my opinion it's just a waste of resources and it just doesn't feel good to me it makes me play worse it gives me a headache i just really don't like that effect at all weapon dof this is effectively motion blur for your zoomed in weapons so same deal there i keep that off uh, colorblind mode that really doesn't matter at all HUD size, I don't believe that matters either. Now, resolution scale, that does matter. If you put this above 100%, that is going to be a big factor in your frame rate. It's going to lower it quite a lot. So even though I'm using a pretty high-end graphics card, I keep that down at 100%. So moving on over to the graphical options. First up, we've got texture quality and texture filtering. Now lowering these will increase your frames per second, but you have to also keep in mind which settings are going to be always the same. So they're always gonna be taxing your system the exact same amount on which ones aren't. Lighting, for example, varies. Depending on the number of people in the game, the, the number of uh, explosives going on, vehicles that are on fire, Anything to do with lighting basically will change. So the more players in the game, the more lighting effects are going to be, and the more of a drag on your frame rate this will be. I find that it doesn't really make the game look that much better, so I actually leave this on low. Mainly, it makes shadows and things like that look better. If I have it on low, the shadows seem a little bit more pixelated and more jagged. If it have it on high or ultra, they all seem very smooth. For me, that really doesn't improve the overall look of the game all that much, and it gives you quite a nice FPS boost by keeping that on low, so I keep that on low. Effects quality, turning this down will give you FPS, but just bear in mind that when you see things like TV missiles from jets, you won't be able to see them as clearly or from as far away if you turn that down. So it can be uh, something that won't really complement your gameplay very well. But it will give you more frames per second, especially if you're playing in a server with a lot of people. 
post-process quality, this really doesn't give you much of a boost, in my opinion, of quality detail in the game. So I keep that on low. It does give you a few more frames. Mesh quality, this is a very important one. So essentially what this is, is how far or at what distance textures will load into the game. So the higher this is, the more textures you will load, the closer you are. And this can be really important. So you're parachuting in on top of a building. If you have an ultra, it will load those textures and the you'll be able to see enemy soldiers up there much faster or, or when you're much further away than if you would have this on low. So I like to have it on ultra. That was also a big deal in BF3. I think everybody had that on the highest setting. Terrain quality and terrain decoration. Obviously, no matter how many players there are in the game, these are always going to be the same because it's just to do with the map, to be honest. I keep those on ultra. Anti-aliasing deferred and also ambient occlusion. Now, I keep ambient occlusion off. You can have it on HBAO. This is called something a little bit different if you're using an AMD card. I think it's, is it HDAO? I'm not exactly sure, but um, SSAO is the lowest setting, and I keep it off because I just don't think it makes that much difference to how the game looks, but it will give you quite a nice frame rate increase if you keep that off. The same with anti-aliasing post. I keep anti-aliasing deferred on four times because I feel this makes enemies pop out a little bit more. Essentially what anti-aliasing is, is it will stop a jagged looking object looking as jagged. So the more you have this on, um, the more smooth objects and surfaces will appear. If you have it completely off, you will see a sort of faint jaggedy outline. I, I, as I said before, I just think that um, soldiers when they run around a corner, they will sort of pop out in your screen just that tiny little bit more. But it's not the be all end of the world when it comes to gameplay. So if you want to turn that off, it will save you a lot of frames. So as I said before, my rig is not the same as your rig. So you should go and just have a fiddle around with these video settings, display your frame rate in the corner and see what kind of frame rates you can get yourself. So one other little trick that a lot of people are utilizing is to actually unpark your cores on your CPU. If you're not familiar with what this is, it's something that was introduced with Windows 7 and 8 where the operating system will effectively park your cores when they're not in use, thereby saving power. But sometimes when you start up a program such as Battlefield 4, those cores will no longer be utilized and that will result in you getting a lower frame rate than you could actually get. So by downloading this utility, which I'm going to link for you guys down below in the description, you can actually unpark any cores that are parked and sometimes it will give you a nice frame rate boost. You can go and check out X Factor's video. He made a great one on that today. So that's Monday if you're watching this then. Um, go and check that video out by him. He explains it much further than I do and a lot of people there are reporting that they're getting 20 to 30 frames per second more on average. Personally I had three cores that were parked, I unparked them all and I only got about 10 FPS extra so it wasn't anything huge for me but appreciated nonetheless. Now the optimization in Battlefield 4 does seem a little bit strange and um, most of you will probably know that if you have Windows 8 you're probably going to be getting around 20 to 30 frames per second more than if you have Windows 7. I'm currently running Windows 7 here and I have thought about getting Windows 8, but it's going to be a lot of problems with recording software. I've heard that DXTory, which is what I use to record, doesn't work with Windows 8 properly. And I'll talk about that in a minute for those of you who out there who actually record your footage, because for me, it's quite an interesting subject. But yeah, getting Windows 8 will definitely help. There also seem to be certain maps which really drag your FPS down more than others. Siege of Shanghai is the main culprit for me. Sometimes, even with my rig, I will dip down to like 40, 50 FPS, which to be honest with you is a lot lower than I expected, but I think that this just has to do with the optimization of the game. So this last part of the video is for those of you out there who like to record your footage. So whether you're somebody who makes YouTube videos like myself or you just like to record your footage to watch back, uh, improve your game and all that kind of stuff, you're going to be using a recording program. Now, NVIDIA have recently reduced the beta version of a new program called Shadowplay, which is included in the GeForce Experience utility. Um, this thing is actually really, really nice. It records in 60 FPS. It gives you literally no frame rate drop. The file sizes are tiny and the quality seems to be just as good 
as what I'm recording with DX Tory at the moment. However, it does have a few drawbacks for me. The main one being that currently in Windows 7, it won't record for any more than about 10 or 11 minutes. It's a certain gigabyte limit. I don't remember the exact size, but it, it turns out to be around 10 or 11 minutes of video. And since a round of BF4 usually lasts longer than that, it's not really possible for me to use that kind of software because you don't notice when it turns off and you don't get the recording started again. On Windows 8, you can record as long as you want. So you just start the recording and then you stop it when you want. I don't know really why they've done this. I don't see any reason why it should be a big deal for it to work in Windows 7. But likewise, there are problems with DX Tori and other recording footage, uh, sorry, recording software with Windows 8. So I'm in a bit of a dilemma as what to do because I really want to upgrade to Windows 8 to get better frames per second. But that also means that I won't be able to use DX Tori because that has problems running with Windows 8. Now I could, of course, start using Shadowplay since that works fine with Windows 8, but then there's this other problem with it. Apparently, whenever you start editing the Shadowplay footage in Adobe Premiere, which is what I use to edit all my footage and sort all my videos out, the audio is completely out of sync with the video, and I've even tried messing around trying to resync the audio, and it's just almost impossible, especially with a game like Battlefield 4 where the audio matters so much, the gunshots really have to sync up with the audio, otherwise it just appears to be stupid. So I really can't be doing with that. Apparently it works fine in other editing software like Sony Vegas, but it's just something to do with Adobe Premiere. So hopefully Nvidia are gonna bring out some sort of a patch. Of course, this is just the beta of this program. Hopefully they're gonna change things so that it will work fine with Premiere, it will work fine in Windows 7. Another issue is that you can't actually record separate audio tracks, so you can't record your microphone like you can do with DX Tori, which is a bit of a bummer. Hopefully they will introduce that as well. But from the get-go, it seems to be a really awesome piece of recording software, and if they add those features, I'll probably most likely be using this in the future. So I hope you found this one useful, guys. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below how did you get on with your frame rate. Leave us a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.